Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. We are in pursuit again of the Lord, and we know, as we said, God sees everything clearly, but we are, they say, looking through a glass darkly. Um, we, are, we are looking through it as according to the Scriptures. We are uh, trying to behold uh, the things of God, and so we see in the scriptures talking about anointing our eyes and, and different things. But today we're going to talk about compassion. And we're going to talk about uh, the things that were freely given to us and being partakers of the divine nature of God. That's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to have some examples of uh, whether or not we are partakers of God's divine nature. Let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, the, for the work that you have begun in us. You will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We thank and praise that you are transforming us, renewing us, O oh God, taking away our stony hearts, God, giving us a heart of compassion, uh, a fleshy heart so we can feel and have uh, um, compassion for one another. I pray that your will be done in us and through us. As we go into this word, may it fall on good ground and take root in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. So first we're going to deal with, we are going to deal with the scripture in um, Isaiah. And um, we always hear the scripture that God's ways are not like our ways. And that's the truth. Is we're going to see through the scriptures how God will set up scenarios in our lives to uh, help us to have his nature. Uh, Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9. And if that particular chapter starts out, hold everyone that thirst, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye and buy and eat, come ye buy wine and milk without money. That's the first verse of Isaiah 55, but we go down to verse 8 and 9. Um, well, let's go up to 7. In fact, I think we should read the whole thing, but I will, uh, for time's sake, we're going to go on and read the 7th verse of 55. Of Isaiah, let the wicked forsake his way and the un uprightness, the unrighteous man, his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For our, for my thoughts, says the Lord, are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So this is important because when we see here that God's ways and his thoughts, and he tells us the um, uh, unrighteous man, and he talks about the wicked man, it returned unto the Lord, and it talks about our thoughts. And we're going to go to now to um, uh, Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. And uh, we're, we're, we always just say we're in pursuit of that which we have been at, um, to apprehend that which we have been apprehended. So I was thinking um, about some people coming in the world and some, thank you, Jesus, some people come in the world, they are born into trouble. It talks about people being born into trouble and which God already know everything. So, and one uh, woman of God says, but Lord, if you knew all these things, why would you allow me to be born into them? But anyway, we're going to go back up to Romans 8. And so we're searching the scriptures to see. First of all, we learn in Isaiah that God's thoughts are not like our thoughts. So now we're going to Romans 8, uh, beginning at the uh, 18th verse. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Okay. And even in creation. Okay, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. So the sons of God yet has not been manifested. So all of these uh, sufferings in this world has something to do with the manifestation. Okay, because it said the creature waited for. So that means all of creation waiting to see what is God making. Okay, for the creature was made subject to vanity and not willingly but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope so you got some people born this particular scripture says 
born subject to vanity, which we know vanity is pride. And he was the, the, the creature was made subject to it, but not willingly. So we know that God is making something and, and it says all of creation waiting to see what he's making. Okay. You go down and read a little bit more of Isaiah. I'm going to read the, um, now we're going to go to Second uh, Peter talking about being partakers. Remember God's thoughts are not like our thoughts. So God is making something. And this came to me because the Bible talks to us all the time about having compassion one for another. Now, do you think by nature we have compassion on one another? No. The, the nature that we have before we are saved and even after we get saved, we have to be, uh, that nature has to start to work in us. That's why we're going to Second Peter verses 1 through 4. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtain like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. You have obtained uh, precious faith. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as he his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue that means god we don't born with uh, uh this knowledge and we have not uh don't have this virtue okay it's not the the uh the unregenerated man it's not the uh man who's been uh who just came in the world through the flesh he does not have this um divine uh, uh nature of god but God is doing something according to uh, Romans with all of these sufferings and all of this stuff is, is happening so that we can um, be transformed. So it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. So we're going to begin to through the knowledge of God, which is the, the scriptures, the word of God. OK, it says whereby I'm given to us exceeding great um uh, great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So that going back to the first man through the flesh, the flesh lusts us. Okay. And so we see here that this divine nature through the knowledge of God comes to us. Hallelujah. It might be that we might become partakers of God's nature. And besides this, giving all diligence, he says, um, go back up to verse four, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. So he has given us through the knowledge of God to have faith. This part, uh, this faith that is this precious faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But you're going to add to your faith in God, uh, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. It's so by nature you don't love. By nature, you're not kind. By the old nature, you're not all, any of these things. But through the precious faith which has been given to us, thank you, Jesus, because God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is now giving us the, the, the ability to be partakers of his divine nature. Okay, so now we see that in Peter. Now we're going to go to Corinthians. Go to Corinthians because we're getting to some place to see what is God's divine nature that we are becoming partakers of? Second, uh, First Corinthians, the second chapter. First Corinthians, the second chapter. Uh, beginning at the first verse. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony. Uh, wait a minute. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, 
all of wisdom, he's talking about the wisdom of this world, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, saving Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Because it's talking about that precious faith. It's talking about the power of God working in you that you might uh, become partakers of God's nature. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world that come to know it. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified. So this blessing that we're getting is coming through the crucifixion of Christ, coming through the suffering of Christ, which we saw back in the book of Romans, uh, when we talk about the sufferings of this world is not to be compared to the glory which shall be shall be revealed in us. But uh, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us by God, which is takes us back to the divine nature of God. Now, what has God given to us that relates to his divine nature? The Lord gave me some examples, okay? Um, and here we're going to talk about those examples. First, we're going to go into, um, let's go to Isaiah 55. And we are looking to see what is God wrought with all these troubles. And I tell you, some people are in the world are born into trouble. They are born into trouble. So what is the purpose that God let them be born into this trouble? Isaiah 55, which I just read before, and I went to, um, which hold everyone that thirsts. I did think I read that. Um, we did read that already. Okay, so let's go to um, Isaiah 26 and 12. And that's, this is one of the scriptures that began to uh, stay in my mind when we talked about Israel. Israel, the 26th chapter of, the, uh, of Isaiah, the 12th verse. Israel says something. The Lord uh, has, uh, will ordain peace for us. For thou has wrought all our works in us. Now, a lot of people, just, that's why I want to talk today about the four J's. One of them is the Jew. The Jew says here, these are Jewish people, or God has ordained Judah, the Jews, and and it, they are saying God has wrought all our works in us. Now, a lot of people can't stand them. But one thing that God is showing in this scripture, when it talks about the Jews, we go into Zechariah, that God is doing a work and he chose the Jewish people he chose Judah. He chose the 12 tribes. He chose Abraham. Thank you, Jesus. He in to carry out what he is working and doing in creation. And a lot of times people, um, which came to me, sometimes you look at people and you despise them and you, you are feel just in, in saying, well, I'm going to withhold anything from these people. But the Lord began to show me that the same people that you despise could be the very one that got to pray for you. And that's why we're going to Zechariah because a lot of people have an issue with the Jews, but this Zechariah tells us something in the scriptures about the Jews. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, and, and it's not just the Jews. Uh, many times we're going to see the people that you feel uh, more superior to or more um, 
disdainful could be the very one that has to pray for you. Now, Zechariah, the eighth chapter, verses 23. And this is what it says in the scriptures. It says, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that 10 men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Now, they, 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 they can't stand the Jews, but God said and the time is going to come when God is going to deal with the nations and they're going to take hold to someone who's a Jew and said, in other words, they, I'm going along with you, okay, because we have heard uh, that God is with you. But God didn't say not just with the Jews. We see in the story of Job, where Job was going through his trial, which God appointed him to that trial. And his friends came to judge him concerning the trial that he was going through. And they judged him, but at the end of it, God told uh, them that they had to get Job, the one they was judging, to pray for them. And they also, which you can read the book of Job, you will see at the end of, of all the trials that he went through and all the judgment and all the criticism and all this, with him, but God ended up having them to get Job, the same one that they couldn't, uh, they were judging, to pray for them. Then the Lord took me to Jonah. Jonah had the same situation where uh, Jonah was fleeing from the hand of God. Trouble came in the lives of those who were on the boat with him and their lives was in, in, in turmoil because of Jonah. But then Jonah was the same one that, uh, um, that God used in Nineveh to turn things. So a lot of times when you look at, um, even if we'll take the Lord, for example, we're going to go to Hebrews. Hebrews talks about how people talk about Jesus and they don't see him because if he came lowly, he came humble, he came uh, meek and, and he came mild in, 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 in a way that men do not have a lot of respect for. But it was the fact that Jesus came that way is because, as we read in Romans, God uh, who is working in creation to create a new creation of through afflictions and through things that, that are going on, uh, he himself came down into the form of a man. This is Hebrews, the second chapter, verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him um, that had uh, the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through a fear of death were all their lives subject to, to bondage. But if you read that, you can see that God was touched with their feelings. God was uh, in touch with all of our feelings. And that's what he talks about when he said we become partakers of the divine nature. Some people in this world come in the world crippled. Some come blind. In fact, the blind man, it says, uh, well, who did sin? Was he or his parents? And Jesus says, none. But for the works of God might be manifested in him. Sometimes we see situations and God is seeing our nature, which we see in the scriptures in Romans. The nature of man really in the, without being converted does not have a lot of compassion. They always justify their reasons for being mean. Okay, but that's not the nature of God because God who could be mean if he wanted to, but he's not in his nature to be mean, okay? It's his main nature is love. God is love. So Isaiah, the 30th chapter, verses 18. I'm going to read is this. It says, um, uh, And therefore will the Lord wait uh, that he may be gracious unto you. Therefore will he be uh, exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. And blessed are all they that wait on him. For the people shall dwell in Zion and in Jerusalem, and thou shalt weep no more. He shall be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. And whom, uh, when he shall hear, he shall answer thee. And that's what's talk about. When we begin to turn to God, that's the God's intent is for people to turn to him. And even when we see someone who is going the opposite of God, 
our job as the vessels of God is to help them turn. And how do we do that? It talks about it in the scriptures in Peter by compassion and by love and by knowledge and by giving them the attributes. In fact, it says overcome evil with good. So it's amazing how God will use certain things to tear down the strongholds of the enemy or to deal against the kingdom of darkness. And he wants to work through us. You know, sometimes we have to realize sometimes people, um, I think it says in Daniel, in the end times, people will be dist- uh, coming up against the church saying they're doing God a favor, but they're not doing God a favor because God has wrought, as you saw in, in the scriptures with Israel, Isaiah 26 and 12, he's, they say God has wrought all of our works in us. So some people who are, uh, you can see in the hand or doing certain things, they're born into families where there's drunkards, there's whoremongers. They're born out of that ground. They're born out of that seed. But God's mission is to save them. And our mission is to be partakers of the nature of God, which God is love. And so I just threw this out here. And what made me uh, think about it is because in the scriptures, it said that people would take hold to one Jew and say, we're going with you. Sometimes the third person that you're looking and saying, I, I don't think I'm going to need this person. They used to say in the world, um, when you are, are up, in fact, it's talking about make your friends with mammon. Because sometimes people that you look at and say, well, I don't think I'm never going to need this person. You never know. Because you don't know how God is is moving in your life or in their lives. So, in fact, the Lord told me, he says, um, when I was in prison, you did not visit me. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was naked, you did not give me. In fact, Proverbs talks about, you know, uh, a lot of times we look at people and, and some I've heard people say, well, you know, they put themselves in there. But sometimes they didn't put themselves in there. Sometimes they're born in what you call generational curses, generational where the people tree got all kinds of uh, stuff in it and the child is born into that. Now, we could say, well, I'm going to judge. But the Bible said not to judge. It didn't call us to judge in that sense, in that um, say, well, I know who is going to heaven, who's not. We don't know that because we saw in the scriptures, God has wrought all this work in Israel. God has uh, told us in the scriptures that um, these uh, things that are going on in people's lives, we cannot judge and say, well, I know for sure they're not going to heaven. You don't know that. You really don't know that. So you're supposed to have God's nature. Proverbs 19 and 7, then we're going to close out. Uh, I mean, this is just came out to me. Now, some people may not agree with it. Okay. Um, okay. Having uh, houses and riches are in the inheritance of fathers. And a uh, prudent wife is from the Lord. So it talks about slow food. And we're going to Proverbs 19 and 7. He that hath Pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he has given will God himself pay him. So it's talking about having pity and having compassion on people. Not always judging them because you you feel, well, I'm doing well, and they are not doing well. That is the purpose of the whole, all of uh, uh, preaching the gospel, talking about having the nature of God. The nature of God is when we were yet in our sins and trespasses, God had compassion to the point of coming down, putting on flesh and going to the very depths of trying, of, 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 uh, putting on our sins, bearing our uh, burdens. God wants us to have the same nature. Now this is what came to me. Okay. And it talks about the things that are freely given to us, which is the divine nature of God so that we could have compassion one for another, that we could, that God could work through us. That God could could use us to overcome evil with good. So anyway, this is just to throw you out here and to see uh, whether or not these words uh, mean anything to you. Because God is looking. In fact, he said, when he finds faith, it when he comes. Will the hearts, as hearts wax cold, will God still be able to use any of us? Because sometimes you can get to the place and say, well, I've escaped like Jonah. Jonah was an example because Jonah was thinking, I know God going to have compassion on Nineveh. I'm not even going to even give these people no word. I'm not going to say anything to them because, in fact, I'm looking forward to their fall. 
In fact, he says a lot of times when you look forward to somebody fall, God will stop the punishment on them and turn that thing around. So we are in this state where we are to be mindful of the divine nature of God. God is love. And sometimes God will like um, Job friends came. God had uh, told them, you, Job has got to pray for you. The one that you judge has got to pray for you because you in bad condition now. So sometimes we, we, what God is doing is Paul said it's a mystery. It's a mystery of what how God is bringing about this new creation. This, but it definitely deals with suffering. And so many people are born in this world in trouble. They're, they, it says they are born into trouble. But God is wroughting a work in creation to bring about a new creation. And so let's not assist the enemy. Let's be partakers of the divine nature of God. Let's make an effort to do that, okay? All right, you pray for me, and I'm going to pray for you. And we're going to pray for one another, okay? And there's a lot of people out there that we might be turning our nose up to. But they were born into some of this. Some of these people, as Job was the victim of the attack of the devil. Some of these children and people, the devil has already said, well, because they're in that family, an uh, alcoholic, a uh, homosexual, a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, whatever, murderer, all that's in your family tree, some of them children going to get that thing. Some of these children are going to be coming, the demons are coming through them, and you got to pray them through. you got to believe God to deliver them. But then you say, well, he didn't come to me, so let, let, let him later for the other ones. But then you can't do that. We ought to have love one for another. Anyway, this is what's on my mind, okay? And if you've ever been in a place where you needed prayer and you needed compassion and needed people to care about you, you maybe would feel that, you know? And sometimes I was telling my husband, I said, sometimes God has to let some people feel what it is to be hungry until they can have a compassion for the hungry or to be naked so they can have compassion for the naked. But anyway... Pray for me and I pray for you, okay? And let's have compassion for people. Let's have love for people. Hallelujah. Let's not look down on everybody that's out there thinking, you know, they deserve it. None of us deserve what we get. It says things that are freely given unto us. In fact, the scripture said, what do you have that you did not receive? I don't think you brought no uh, 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 a big old load of stuff and you came into the world. You came into the world naked, so you're going to go out naked. Okay, that's what the Lord, the words say. But pray for each other. Hopefully, this is in, inspiring us to have compassion for people and not judge them and, and pray for them. Pray much for them, okay? Because they're in the bonds of, of of iniquity or they're in the grips of Satan, and we are praying for them, okay? In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you. We pray that our hearts will be pricked and we would have compassion for you had compassion on us thank and praise the lord god that your spirit will work freely through us oh god that we will continue to uh, through the faith it could be put on a uh, virtue and put on uh, a compassion could put on your nature lord god as you continue to use us in this season and time so many souls as you said the harvest is right but the labors are few we pray that you will send forth labors into your harvest that the souls will know that you love them with an everlasting love we pray that you will work in us, through us, and for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. But anyway, this was what came to my mind. We need to have more compassion for people, okay? Because God could flip this thing anytime and you be on the other end of it. You ain't have to be on the top. You could be on the bottom, okay? This is for everybody who's listening. In Jesus' name, amen.